Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Today is part two of my video on rounding up to the next cent. The nearest cent, I guess you could call it. Rounding up to the, to the nearest cent, not down, up. In other words, we're always moving right on the timeline. Timeline, on the number line. I keep saying timeline. Why do I keep saying timeline? Anyways, this part two, in part one, I show you how to do it without any VBA, so that was the beginner part of it. Now I'm going to show you the developer part. We're going to make this function here called round up sense. So before we get started, if you've never done any VBA programming before and you want to learn how, go watch this video first. It's about 20 minutes long. It'll teach you everything you need to know to get started. And go watch this function where I teach you how to create your own custom functions in VBA, okay, which is what we're going to do today. All right, here I am back in the same database I had last time. Here's the thing. Now, if you don't want to have to remember to put this calculation everywhere you want to use this, we can just make a function called round up sense. So I'm going to come down here to my global module. If you don't have a global module, just go to create and then click on module. All right, it'll create a blank one for you. Don't pick class module. That's something totally different. Pick module. I already have one right here. And so I'm going to use this one. I'm going to put it right here. And I'm going to say public function round up sense C as a currency as a currency. What does that do? Well, public means everybody in the database can use it as opposed to private, which means only other members of this module could call it. All right. It's a function, which means it's going to return a value as opposed to a subroutine, which just does stuff and doesn't return a value. The name of it is roundup sense. It takes in a value C as a currency and it's going to return a currency. Okay. So we're going to break it down the same way that we broke it down in the query before step by step. Okay. So we're going to say first C equals C times a hundred. All right. Take the value, multiply it by a hundred. All right. C equals C times negative one. We're going to multiply it by negative one. C equals the int of C. Now we're going to round it down on the, on the timeline, timeline, round it down on the number line to the next integer to the left, which will make it bigger. Okay. C equals uh, the uh, C times negative one again, flip it. And then C equals C divided by a hundred to get rid of that extra hundred that we put in there. Now we should be left with the final value. So now we'll say the name of the function round up sense equals C. And that's the value that will get returned. If you want to test it, you could test it right here using something called the immediate window. So go to view and then immediate window. That brings up this little pane down here. All right, watch this question mark. That means you're querying round up sense and then put a value in here. Let's go 1.011 like that and then press enter and it will run it through that and give you the return value. See, that's pretty cool, right? Let's try a different value. I'm going to just delete all this stuff here, right? 9.9999 like that and then enter and it's 10. See, so now we know that that function works. All right, when you're done with using this, you can close that. I use the immediate window every now and then. Um, but now we have this function we can just call roundup sense anywhere in our database. So uh, save this, control S, debug compile once in a while, all right? Make sure that your code compiles. Let's create another new function, create query design, or another query, not function. Bring in that customer table again, customer ID, and we'll find credit limit, which we'll again call C. You don't have to. All right, now here, all we have to say is, uh, some new value, let's call it X, is going to be round up sense, open parentheses, C, just like that. Okay, round up sense C. And now when I run this, look at that. That's all I need to do is call that function. Okay, and that's the benefit of using a global function like that with a little VBA. Save this, what is it, round up 3Q? Okay, now, a couple little things. Obviously in here, this is fine, but what happens if you're on the customer form, not layout, design view, and you come down here, 
And let's copy and paste this credit limit. And I'm just going to get rid of the label. We're going to put that rounded value here. Okay, so I'm going to come in here and I'm going to say equals the uh, round up sense. Notice it shows up in the IntelliSense here. It doesn't always show up in the queries though. Okay, and we'll call this round up credit limit. Okay, save that, close it. So now we should get the rounded version. And since it's calculated, I like to make that gray. So we'll come over here and just pick light gray. All right, save it, close it, open it. All right, looks good. If I put the, okay, it rounded it nicely. If I go to a new record, that's fine. Now, the default value of zero is getting sent into it. What if I don't have a default value in that credit limit field? Let's say for the customer table, credit limit doesn't have a default value, all right? Which means it's gonna be null, okay? If I come in here now, these, these all look fine. If I go to a new record, I get an error in there. I don't wanna see errors in there. How do we handle that? Likewise, what if the user tries sending in something like the letter A? Okay, how do we handle that? Well, we'll talk about that in the extended cut for the members. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut uh, videos. Uh, gold members can download these databases. You get Code Vault. Everybody gets some free training and all kinds of extra stuff. Now, a few other things before you go away, a few other things I want to point out. In this global module, okay, a lot of you are looking at that going, that's not very efficient code. It's not. It's not really going to slow the, the execution down. It might. Uh, we're talking microseconds, okay? But is this the most efficient code? No, it's not. In fact, let me copy it here. And I'll just paste it in from my notes. There we go. This is a lot tighter. It's written better. I'm going to call this roundup sense two because you can't have two functions with the same name in there. Okay. But if you look at this, it's not quite as evident what's going on here. So I like to call this human friendly. When I write my code, that's kind of how my brain functions. I think in steps like this. Okay. If you want later on, you can take this and tighten it down like we did with the queries in the last video, right? Tighten it down to a much shorter bit of code. But you know what? This is easier three years from now if I come back to try to figure out what I was doing. This is easier to read for a human, okay? This might be more efficient and it might look a little better, you know, makes you look a little more professional. I don't care. I want something that's easily readable. I wanna say, okay, I multiplied it by 100, I negated it, took the int, negated it again, divided it by 100. Okay, I get it now. I look at this and I'm like, uh, okay, you got to start from in here. That goes first and this. And... You see what I'm saying? So all those people that are telling you, oh, that's not very efficient code. It doesn't have to be. Don't listen to those people. All right. Sorry, I'm not as you know professional a code writer as you. I write for clarity, right? And put, put comments in here if you want to and all that stuff. The compiler don't care. And unless you're crunching billions of numbers, you're not going to notice a difference in speed. Okay, so that's just my two cents. I've got so much code that, you know, 25 year old Rick wrote 20, what, seven years ago now. And I come back and I look at it and I'm like, what was I thinking? Because I didn't used to write with a lot of comments and I used to try to like make my code as tight and efficient as possible. No, no. Now I write for, for 60 year old Rick to be able to read it later. Okay. And if you like these programming tips for me and you want to learn more, you want to benefit from my decades of experience building databases with Microsoft Access, I got tons of developer lessons available on my website. Come and check them out. Don't forget about the extended cut for the members where I'll teach you how to deal with those null values. And if the user tries to send something into your function, that's not a number. But aside from that, that is going to be your tech help video for today. Hope you enjoyed this little two-part series and I hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time. A special thank you and shout out to our diamond sponsors. Juan Soto with Access Experts Software Solutions, manufacturing experts specializing in Access and SQL Server. Sammy Shama with Shama Consultancy, a certified Microsoft Access expert who offers personalized one-on-one -on -one tutoring. And Amanda Nicole Consulting, specializing in helping businesses move from complex Excel sheets to an Access database. You'll find links to the Diamond Sponsors in the description down below the video. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have below. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can.
Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Want to learn more? Click the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. YouTube does a pretty good job of hiding it. It's right down there. See this part of the description here, right? The name, the videos up here. There's a little show more down there, right down the bottom. It's kind of hard to find. But once you click on that, you'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. And YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted like they used to do. But if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. And you can pick how frequently to get emails from me, either as they happen daily, weekly, or monthly. Now, if you'd like to become a paid member of my channel and receive all kinds of awesome perks, click on the join button. You'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks, including my extended cut videos, access to my code vault, lots of VBA source code in there, template downloads, and lots more. I'll talk more about these perks at the end of the video. Even if you don't want to commit to becoming a paid member, and you'd like to help support my work, please feel free to click on the tip jar link. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got some puppies to feed. But don't worry, no matter what, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you really want to learn Access and you haven't tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, and more. It's over four hours long. You could find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? The whole thing, free, four hours. Go watch it. And okay, okay, a lot of you have told me that you don't have time to sit through a four-hour course. So I do now have a quicker Microsoft Access for Beginners video that covers all the basics faster in about 30 minutes. And no, I didn't just put the video on fast forward. <laughs> but I'll put a link to this down below as well. Now, if you like level one, level two is just a dollar. That's it, one dollar. And that's another whole like 90 minute course. Level two is also free for paid members of any level, including supporters. So if you're a member, go watch level two. It's free. Okay, want to get your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and send me your question there. Members get priority, of course. While I do try to read and respond to all of the comments posted below in the comments section, I only have time to go through them briefly a couple of times a month, and sometimes I get thousands of them. So send me your question here on the tech help page, and you'll have a better chance of getting it answered. And while you're on my website, be sure to stop by my Access Forum. We've got lots of lively conversations about Microsoft Access and other topics. I have a fantastic group of moderators who help me answer questions. Shout out to Alex, Kevin, Scott, Adam, John, Dan, Juan, and everybody else who helps out on the site. I appreciate everything you do. I couldn't do it without you. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course on YouTube. Yeah, I'm on Facebook too, but I don't like Facebook. Don't get me started. Now, let's talk more about those member perks. If you do decide to join as a paid member, there are different levels. Silver, Gold, Platinum, and Diamond. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class every month, and some other perks. Gold members... Get all the previous perks, plus access to download the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use, the code that I build in most of the videos. You'll also get higher priority if you do submit any tech help questions. Now, answers are never guaranteed, but you do go higher in the list for me to read them. And if I like your question, you got a good chance of it being answered. You'll also get one free expert level class each month after you've finished the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus even higher priority for tech help questions. You get access to all of my full beginner level courses for every subject, 
and I cover lots of different subjects like Word, Excel, VBA, ASP, lots of different stuff, not just Access. These are the full-length courses found on my website. You get all the beginner ones. In addition, once you finish the expert classes, you get one free developer class per month. So lots of training. And finally, you can also become a Diamond sponsor. You'll have your name or your company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown on each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you again soon.